Unfold, a tale of war in darkness stalled. Beneath the gaze of fine eyes, a deep man speaks with the mournful sighs. O oh, fallen shepherd, stay. sins to confess. I've come here to speak the truth. My conscience is as clear as a child's. I have been framed and almost driven to insanity. But I am resolute in my faith. Oh Lord, that cursed day. It began like any other. Nothing could have predicted the horrifying events that would unfold later that night. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but... Hello? Hello. Is this Father Matthias? Yes, speaking. How may I assist you? This is Marina Constanza. I'm a member of your parish, though I think it's unlikely you know me. I'm not much of a churchgoer. Oh, it may seem weird for me to come out of nowhere and ask for your help. I'm not even a good Christian. Banish the thought. God, in his infinite mercy, takes care of all his children. But please, tell me more about what's troubling you. <sighs> Thank you, Father. You're too kind, but I'd rather not talk on the phone about my situation. I'd like to meet you in person if possible. It is a, well, a delicate matter. Can I come by? I live not far from there. Well, certainly. I've just finished my prayers and I'm about to prepare some tea. Do you have any preferences? You're too kind. A cup of strawberry tea would be lovely. Right, then I'll be expecting you. If I'm not available, Felix, one of my students, will assist you until I return. Thank you. I'll see you soon. God bless, and be safe on your way here. I recall it well. It was a few days before Christmas, just after Vespers. The distant sound of the organ in the nearby chapel filled the air as I readied myself to meet Lady Marina.
Good evening. My name's Marina. We talked earlier on the phone. Good evening, and God bless. I am Father Matthias Martin, at your service. a lovely place. I always wondered how priests live, all by themselves. Must be terribly lonely. You know, this is a, a delicate situation. I'm considering your feelings, and I don't want to be callous, but it's just not possible. What can I say? I'm not good at discussing romantic love between a man and a woman. I can preach to you about the love of God. I understand, Father. I understand. Oh, I feel so naive. I shouldn't have come here. I'm the only one to blame for this embarrassment. You shouldn't talk like that. There's no shame in loving someone. But not like this. We can still be friends in Christ. Oh, spare me that talk. I don't need a sermon. Pour me a glass of wine and I'll be on my way. That was the last thing I expected. But in retrospect, Felix always was a bit nosy. Thank you. 
Christ! That was too close. I have to do something about this. If Felix were to uncover this, it would be catastrophic. Me with a woman in my bed is one thing, but a lifeless body? I cannot in good conscience leave her here. Unwillingly, I found myself ensnared in a cruel game, seemingly orchestrated by either God or perhaps the devil. What choices did I have? I struggled to banish the unsettling notion that I might have, in some way, played a role in her death. Convinced of my innocence, and determined to remain steadfast in my faith, I proceeded to search for a way to handle Marina's body in the most Christian manner possible. I would transport the chest to the old cemetery and lay it to rest in a disused crypt. I prepared myself with the meticulousness of a criminal, preparing all the needed tools for this grim undertaking. On the seat beside me lay her farewell letter to her lover, destined to be mailed that very night upon my return from the cemetery. What could possibly go wrong? No, Christ Almighty! doubt in my mind that the infant and the apparition were the work of the devil. They vanished in the blink of an eye. Many Catholic priests dismiss the demonic as a mere relic of the past, but I've witnessed firsthand the reality. I did not care if it was just as God's as presence is palping tricks with my So mind. too is the presence of the was inside the chest. As gruesome as it sounds, I released a sigh of hope. Her running around as a tormented ghost was the last thing that I imagined possible. I finally arrived at the old cemetery just after midnight. Tormented by guilt and perplexed by the seemingly unexplainable situation in which I found myself. I knew deep within my heart that the demonic vexation had only just begun.
caused the waters to rise. Just a few minutes ago, we received reports of a female torso being found washed ashore near the old fish market. The grisly discovery has sparked a shock among the gathered onlookers. The police have initiated an investigation, despite the authorities' efforts to withhold details. Information has already leaked. There are rumors that the torso has been manipulated or by Her entrails seem to have been removed. Fear has enveloped our community, and we strongly advise everyone to exercise caution, particularly young women walking alone at night. Into your hands, O oh Lord, I humbly entrust your departed servant, Marina Constanza. In this life, you embraced her with your tender love. Deliver her now from every evil and bid her enter eternal rest. The old order has passed away. Welcome her then into paradise, where there will be no sorrow, no weeping, no pain, but the fullness of peace and joy with your Son and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Just as the vision dissipated, vile, echoing whispers began to surround me. Upon returning to the crypt, I stopped and gazed in horror towards the entrance. Father Josiah was correct. The chest and her body had disappeared, vanishing into thin air. I hastily departed from that place, indifferent to whether what happened was real or if I was slowly losing my sanity. An hour later, I found myself back at the rectory, where I decided to compose my resignation letter, prepare for a spiritual and psychological checkup, and surrender myself to the authorities. Little did I know that the evening held more surprises for me. Imagine my shock. Not only were they secretly in love, which was hard to believe in itself, but they had a child. Thank you. 
everything pointed to a different sequence of events. What I was certain of was that she did visit me that day. However, after we had tea, things started to make less and less sense. The rain keeps pouring, yet despite the flood and harsh weather, the police persist in their efforts to locate the remaining parts of the young woman's body. The police are scouring the area, knocking on doors and asking questions, while auxiliary troops try to keep the curious onlookers at bay. Updates come in steadily, suggesting the murder happened recently, perhaps just hours ago, as the wounds are still fresh. There's a constant fear that the killer is on the loose and might strike again. Notably, our town hasn't seen such a brutal murder since before the war, and people are not accustomed to living in fear for their lives. Hello? I felt as if the veil had been lifted from my eyes. What if something truly awful had occurred at the rectory and I witnessed it? Perhaps the trauma was too overwhelming, causing me to lose touch with reality. Could I have concocted this seemingly romantic affair as a coping mechanism? Then what was the real picture? What happened with Marina after we had tea? Despite his betrayal of vows, my prayers were for Josiah's soul and the safety of the innocent child. In the heat of the moment, driven by jealousy, a man may succumb to the depths of depravity, committing the most abominable acts. Could Josiah's hands be tainted with blood? search for the missing victim's head, a new threat looms over the city. The rising floodwaters unleashed by the storm. The old fish market, the epicenter of the gruesome discovery, now lies submerged. Thank you. 
Captain Arbogast threatened me. He demanded a confession. Despite insinuating that he suspected Father Josiah and perhaps Felix, I knew he actually had his eyes on me. But how could I confess to something I haven't done? I wasn't in good conscience, ready to do that. Instead, I proceeded to look around for evidence that would tie on. I patched the wound as best I knew how. It was sort of painful, but not as painful as the realization that my friend, Father Josiah, may have been the one who murdered Marina. It was at that moment that I decided to call the police and voice all my concerns. Would you look at this? What kind of twisted fantasy are you reading? This is stuff only a priest should possess. The fish market has finally been established. Marina Constanza. Her dismembered body has just been transported to Central Hospital for a thorough examination in a desperate attempt to further analyze the brutal murder. Meanwhile, her grieving husband remains in a state of profound shock, grappling with the horrifying reality of his loss. According to her husband, she had just given birth to a baby boy two months ago. The search for answers has been reluctantly halted for the evening, with plans to resume at the first light of morning. Despite the grim discovery of the body parts, one crucial element remains conspicuously absent, Marina's baby. Despite relentless efforts by both officials and volunteers, the whereabouts of the innocent boy remain shrouded in mystery, fueling chilling speculation of kidnapping, murder, or even fallen prey to possible predation by wild animals. The widowed husband clings to fading hope, yearning to locate the remains of their precious child. Whatever the rest... with him to stay away, to drop the knife, but the man wouldn't listen. I was frantically waving the revolver towards him when suddenly...
And at that moment, I felt as if the devil had finally won. There was no reason for me to live. I was ready to put an end to it all, when suddenly... Here I am, with Josiah's death weighing heavily on my soul. But it feels like it was bound to happen. I know it's difficult to accept, but he made two attempts on my life. It was purely self-defense. However, what I can't comprehend is why I'm being unjustly accused of Marina's murder. Why doesn't anyone believe I am innocent? Felix, that is enough! You are not Father Matthias Martin! On that fateful afternoon, you received a phone call from Marina. She wanted to talk about her relationship with Josiah and came over with her baby. They planned to leave that night, yet your mind conjured a different image of her. Alluring, flirtatious, daring. In truth, she was merely a troubled soul seeking a fresh start. Regrettably, the phone in my room was broken diverting the call to yours as we share the same landline. Alas, fate dictated that it was you who answered. I dare not say the murder was premeditated. You snapped upon hearing of Marina and Josiah's relationship. Her tale of their love likely struck you like a thunderbolt. The sight of their child overwhelmed you, serving as a harsh reminder that your desires would never be fulfilled. dragged her body down into the basement, and you proceeded to dismember her place. While I was at the chapel conducting the midnight service, you loaded the chest into your truck and drove to the old bridge. You claimed to have gone to the old cemetery with the intention of burying her corpse, but the chest mysteriously vanished. The truth is, when you arrived at the old cemetery, there was no chest in your trunk. That's because you disposed of it by throwing it over the bridge. That's how the currents from upstream washed away all the body parts into the city. Father Josiah waited for Marina to arrive, but when he saw the stroller and heard the news of her corpse being found, he lost it. It wasn't difficult to piece everything together. It was a miracle, though, that you spared the child, whom I found in the basement. I locked him safely in my room and went straight to the police. You were arrested right after you found the baby. Praise the Lord. I dread to think what you could have done to him. You see, 
I'm hesitant to talk about this, but the rumors are true. I am a priest. I am Father Matthias Martin. And as I look at your face, your expression speaks volumes, young man. You have lived a sinful life. If it is true what they say, that you are a priest, then I'd like to unburden my soul. Ah, my child, how brave of you. Come, kneel before me. Fear not, our exchange shall be brief and entirely confidential.